Okay, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let somebody know that pastor is here. Um, I um, actually run a little bit late today because I'm just leaving the funeral for Sister Cicelyn Gooding, which was the saintly mother of our own Sister Shirley Millard. And so I'm a little bit behind today, but I'm glad to see everybody. So please come on, come on. How are you, Angela Kelly, Sister Valerie Ellis, Tanya, how are you, Sister Show Boat, right? A little bit out of breath. I'm actually um, at my father's house where we're trying to get some work done here. I said, let me just pause here because we don't want anything to get in the way of our sharing um, out of God's word. Thank you, Salem, for just being the wonderful, wonderful um, person, persons that you are. Thank you for your love and thank you for your support. I would encourage you to try to get outside. It's a beautiful day. It's hot, but it's a beautiful day. Hello, Melissa. I'd like to talk to you. Sister Maxine, how are you? Um, so let me, um, Sister Wallace, good to see you. Let me um, just give some scattering comments. Thank those of you who joined us on Sunday for our worship experience. Uh, I look for you on tomorrow for our, our noonday prayer and also join us on Wednesday for our Bible study. We will have a different facilitator, but I'll be there. Um, you'll be surprised. I have a surprise guest facilitator for tomorrow, I mean, for Wednesday for our Bible study. Please know that we are pretty much on track. I believe we're working hard to see if we can't actually meet in the sanctuary by the fourth Sunday in, in July. We're still working on that. There's some things that we have to get done, but we are diligently working to make that happen. Okay, so also continue to follow um, the mandates. I mean, the numbers are escalating all over the country as it relates to COVID-19 virus. It hasn't gone anywhere, but prayerfully, and thankfully, New York is doing well. We're doing, we're outpacing the country and we're outpacing um, other states because I think people are really trying to practice the social distancing and people are wearing masks. I can tell you that I was at a service today. Everybody was practicing social distancing. Everyone had on a mask. We all wore masks except for the time that we, in fact, were speaking. And I think that everybody will be safe. They had a pretty good... Um, a pretty good audience today, but you can only have 25% of the occupancy. But all of the um, CDC guidelines were being um, watched or being followed is what I want to say. And so this, this word here jumped out at me. I want to read for our meditation today from um, Paul's letter to his son, Timothy. And this is Paul's final letter that he writes to his son, Timothy. And I think by extension, he speaks to us today. I um, actually found this Bible in my dad's bedroom because I was like, God, where am I going to get a Bible? But let me tell you, God will make a way out of no way. Whatever you need, just ask him. He's able to provide. Um, we just have, we have, the Bible says we have not because we ask, we have not because we ask not. So anyway, Second, Second Timothy, and I, I think this, this word speaks to us today. And Paul writes, this is his final letter to his son, Timothy. He wants to give him some instruction as he begins his ministry and as he himself has taken leave um, of, um, of this life, as it were. And so he says to his son, Timothy, and by extension to us, he says, um, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, Exalt with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Let me just pause there for a second and say that that's the kind of season that we're in. And, and Paul knew that that would happen in the days of his day, and it would certainly happen in Timothy's ministry, and it also happened in, 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 in my ministry, and it also happened in your life and in your ministry. So he says, the time will come when people don't want to hear sound doctrine, when people will not want to hear the truth, but they will 
listen to things that are tickling to the ear. But he says to his son and to us by extension, he says, but watch thou, I'm in verse five, in all things endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. He says, but you and all things endure afflictions. This is a, as the preacher said at the service today, these are uncertain times. These are times that are afflicting us. We have this pandemic, there is no cure for it. So the only thing we can do is practice the social distancing, I like to say physical distancing, and wear our mask and wash our hands and do all the things that are required to do. This is a pandemic season that we're in. Also, people think, well, it's gonna go away by the fall. Probably not, it'll probably get worse in the fall. Um, people thought that, well, when the summer comes, it won't live in the heat, that's not true. We also thought that young people would not be infected or affected. Now we're finding that more young people are affected and infected than older people. Why? Because they don't want to hear the fact that they can in fact catch this virus. We have massive unemployment amongst our people. We have poor housing conditions and we are being disproportionately affected health-wise. These are times of afflictions. But Paul says, you have to endure. The race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but to those who hold out until the end. And then I'm going to be done in just a minute. I'm going to stop at verse seven. He says, this is the apostle. He says, for I, am not, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. And Paul is letting his son Timothy know that he's going to be leaving. He'll be leaving the ministry. He'll be leaving this world as it is. All of us have a date with this destiny called death. I don't want to be morbid, but the reason why is that if you understand that, then you will make every effort to live life to its fullest and understand that every day is a day of thanksgiving from God. That's why this time is considered the present. It is a present. It is a gift of God. So if you have a reasonable portion of your health and strength, if you're breathing, if you're able to walk and talk, then do the best that you can with this day because the time will come when we will be called off the stage of life as we know it. And then verse seven is where I'm gonna stop. He says, but I fought a good fight. I hope that can be our testimony when this is all said and done, that we have fought a good fight, that we've done the best we can. If I can help somebody if I, as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show someone that they're traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. I wanna fight a good fight. I, I don't wanna rust out, but I want to work out my soul salvation with fear and trembling. Some people say, Pastor, you're working too hard. I'll tell you something. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I want you to join with me. Let's work together, children. Let's not get weary because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for those who love him. Paul says, I finished my course. I've run the race. I, I didn't quit in the beginning. I didn't quit in the middle. I didn't get tired. I didn't give up. One of the poems that I remember to this day is don't quit. Don't quit, though the pace seems slow. You might succeed with another blow. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. Learn too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out with silver tints and clouds of doubt. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. It's when things seem bad that joy is right around the corner. It's just the greatest darkness just before the light. He says, I fought a good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, but one that comes and must believe that he is and that he's reward of those who diligently seek him. He says, and so... I know that there's laid up, I'm in verse eight now, for me, a crown of righteousness, which Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, should give me at that day. 
I'm so glad that I'm not dependent on people to judge me. I'm so glad I don't have to depend on this racist president that we have in the White House. I'm so glad that I don't have to look to political leaders or people in power to elevate me or to crown me or to affirm me. I'm affirmed by the blood and the grace of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I know that there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, should give me at that day. And not to me only. He's not selfish. He's not biased. He's not a racist. But to all those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. God bless you. Let's pray. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth as we yet try to speak. Thank you for even making a way today so that we could spend this time together. How we love you, how we praise you, how we adore you, how we thank you for just being the wonderful God you are. Thank you for continuously looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. I pray, oh God, for each person that thought it not robbery to tune in today because they want to spend this time in prayer and this time in your word. You know their needs, you know their concerns, so we pray, oh God, that you'd meet them at the point of their need. Pray for those that are bereft of spirit, how we pray for Sister Shirley Millard now as she goes to bury her mother. We remember Sister to Kathy Stanley, as she buries her mother, longtime member of our church, Sister Geneva Stanley. And we remember the family, Sister Hilda Baskerville. Oh God, comfort them. Make real the words of Jesus. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We pray for those that are sick and shut in. We still know that you are a doctor with more healing in him regardment than all the hospitals in all the world. Keep us, oh God, and we shall be kept. Grant us those things that we need, but more importantly, grant us your joy and your peace. Hear our prayer now. Incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so, so very, very much. Let's, let me give the benediction, and then I'm going to keep moving on. And I look to see you on tomorrow, and certainly join us for Bible study on Wednesday. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. You're down, sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. I love you all. I'll see you soon.